Okay, um... Very well. Much better. Much better. So, uh, um, now that we know the color and we have done our first opaquing for masking, uh, what's next is uh, to use the right color for, um, for matching our porcelain and we will be using our B3. You see on my tray this is my B3 right here. So uh, all I do is uh, start mixing a little bit of B3 with my, my brush. Once that I have uh, done my mix on my brush let me see if I can show you how I'm mixing now my opaque uh, amalgamating it to get it the right I want it the right uh, smoothness so uh, that means that my opaque needs to be the right consistency to be laid out on the surface of this coping here we are I keep laying my opaque you see right now I'm staying far from my margins and when I bring my brush from the top of the coping I come low on my margin that's it you might have noticed that this kind of brush ends up with a sharp edge and that's because there are some areas that I do need a point when I want to lay out precisely my opaque and so uh, I hope you're being able to, to see what I'm doing okay get a better shot with the light so uh, I think that we are in good shape here maybe a little bit more to mask some areas where I do see some uh, still some gray especially around the the neck of the motor where area of ceramic will be a little bit thinner and where light will be able to uh, to come through so uh, I think this is pretty good uh, I don't care about having a very smooth surface because uh, uh, actually I do like a more of a a broken surface because this kind of reflects light in different directions so in the end it looks more natural as a build-up tooth uh, at this stage once I have laid out my opaque I can go on and do again what I've done before that means to sprinkle my uh, oh, my crystals this is a uh, ceramic system where the crystals do also uh, a good job into reflecting the light that transpasses the, uh, the porcelain that's it uh, again let me see if I can show you the surface here okay let me see if I can bring it better under the light no we don't have a good light here uh, let's see now yeah maybe this is better so this is how my uh, my surface must look it's uh, masking well, the opaque is masking well all my metal surface and the first max masking of opaque has been uh, 
has done its job. So now we can put it on the tray as we've done before. We put it on the tray and we are careful while we're putting it on the tray to not let this fall off the stands as we don't want. And uh, it is a little bit annoying here. Okay. So we can open our platform door. That's it. And we are ready to uh, give the second bake to our bake. And uh, after that, uh, the, the, the framework has been uh, taken care, has been treated to be well masked and to have a ceramic bond to it. Uh, one thing I didn't speak about, I didn't talk about, was uh, oxidation. The way uh, the surface of the coping has oxidized during the metal treatment. And this oxidation helps also to have a stronger bond with this laying mask of opaque. So the porcelain fused to the metal will have strength. So uh, we start the oven. You see it's in a drying position now, my program. It starts off from 500. And uh, there it goes. We will see when it comes out. Okay, we see my program is set at 950. 974 these are the centigrades now program is complete it has released vacuum because this goes under vacuum and uh, here it comes out see it's red hot and there we have it it's hanging on there my coping and uh, that's it with our second bake of porcelain. I'm going to be putting it on this tray, on my rapid cool cooling tray. And uh, that's it with what's concerned uh, opaquing. Of course, this is a single unit and makes things very easy, but uh, of course, a larger span bridge or uh, surface to be treated uh, makes things a little bit more technical. And from here, we will proceed with our porcelain build.